Welcome to the Graphic Policy Television GPTV. I'm Brett. We're discussing the latest release for the DC deck building game, Watchmen. This is the latest crossover pack to hit the game. Um, it's taken characters from the legendary Alan Moore and uh, David Gibbs and Dip Gibbons graphic novel and bringing them to the deck building game. I'm a huge fan of the DC deck building game. Um, huge, huge, huge fan. I absolutely love it. It's one of my favorite deck building games out there. Um, I think that the flavor of the game is really, really fun. The type of cards you get to use are, are entertaining uh, and to be able to, you know, play a game where you can be uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, whatever, is really, really entertaining. Uh, I think it's uh, a lot of fun. So uh, DC, the DC deck building game gets the Watchmen crossover pack, which have been a great addition and really, really smart of Cryptozoic to be doing. Uh, and that uh, the crossover packs is an easy way to change up the game, add new mechanics, give you new characters. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. This pack uh, brings in six all-new superheroes to play. Uh, there's also now a hidden role mechanic, which adds suspicion and who-can-you-trust elements to the game. There's all-new loyalty cards, villainous machination cards, challenge cards, and mastermind, mastermind uh, plot cards. There's six oversized superhero cards, 31 game cards, rules... Uh, of course, you need a copy of the DC deck building game to actually use this, though. So, you know, keep that in mind. You can't just go out and get this and suddenly you've got a game. You, you kind of need the main game. So, let's open this up, show it off of who you are going to get. Uh, it should be no shock at all that the characters that you get for this uh, are all the various Watchmen characters. Uh, of course, there's Night Owl. Each time you play an equipment during your turn, you may put a card from your discard pile on the bottom of your deck. We've got uh, Osmandius. At the end of each of your turns, draw an extra card and then put a card from your hand on top of your deck. Rorschach. Uh, once during each of your turns, you may discard a card from your hand to play the top card of another player's deck and then return it. Of course, got Dr. Manhattan. Uh, the second time you play a superpower during each of your turns, you may destroy a card in your hand. The Comedian, you pay one less to attack by attack cards the first time you play a villain during each of your turns, draw a card. Very appropriate for the character. And then finally, Silk Spectre, each time you play a hero during your turn, look at the top card of your deck, you may discard it. Uh, all in all, characters are exactly kind of what I expected, at least who was in there. Uh, one thing I do have to say, the immediate thing that jumps out at me is the art is all from before Watchmen. There's none of this, I believe, is uh, original Watchmen graphic novels. These are all of the before Watchmen sequel, which will probably get some folks a little irritated. Uh, but before Watchmen actually was not that bad. Uh, as a series, there was there were some that was actually pretty solid out of that, but the art looks good, nonetheless. So, as we said, we've got a whole bunch of things. We've got challenge cards, mastermind plots. We can kind of go over these. Uh, Villainous machinations, loyalty, and then new equipments and stuff like that. So let's go with the easy stuff. So we got equipments, uh, some heroes. Location, superpowers, and some villains. There weren't many villains in uh, Watchmen, so it'll be interesting. So equipment, you know, the person who's got had the best equipment, and most of it was Night Owl Mask. Gives you plus two power and choose two players. Each player, uh, chosen player, draws a card. Then destroy the top two cards of the main deck, which is interesting. All right. Next, we got Rorschach's Mask, uh, plus two power. If this is the first card you play this turn, uh, each player discards their hand and draws four cards. Next, we have another uh, owl thing. Uh, the owl ship equipment, plus three power. Destroy all non-hero cards in the lineup and then replace them. All right, we have our first hero. It's Sally Juspezik. I don't know if I ever actually pronounced that one right. Uh, hero, you gain the top card of the main deck. If it costs uh, is four or less, repeat this process. If it, if it cost is six or greater, destroy it. Okay. So I guess five, nothing happens. Uh, 
Bet you that one's going to get some arguing since, you know, it says nothing about five. Uh, we have Hollis Mason, uh, plus three power, destroy all non-equipment cards in the lineup and then replace them. Location, we've got New York City. Ongoing during each of your turns, you may buy one card from the destroy pile as if it were in the lineup. If you do destroy the top card of the main deck. There's a lot of destroying things here. A lot of destroying things from the deck, which is interesting considering that's one way uh, you count down in the game. Next, we've got Reconstruction Superpower. Uh, destroy all non-superpower cards in the lineup and then replace them, plus three power. Again, with the destroying cards... Uh, duplication, choose another card you have in play, play it twice. Each other player destroys a card in that uh, name in their hand or discard pile. Disintegration, uh, you may pay 15 power. You do remove this card from the game and then destroy a loyal superhero or a current challenge. This That sounds interesting. And then we have the first uh, villain, uh, which is Rioters, plus three power, destroy all non-villain cards in the lineup, and then replace them. And Moloch the Mystic is the final villain. Uh, just reveal the top card of your deck, and you may destroy it if you do. Each other player destroys the top card of their deck. Again, a lot of destroying cards. I'm noticing a very th interesting theme with these cards. It's all destroying things. All right, so we have some uh, interesting things here we don't know about. Um, so this pack takes the crossover series in a whole new direction, hidden roles. Each team member is secretly working on their own nefarious plan. Stop them before it's too late. You, you may use any DC deck building game set. However, you won't use the supervillains or the oversized superheroes from that set. In Watchmen, there's no supervillain stack when your teammates is the real threat. Objectives. The loyal team member want to beat the challenge cards before the main deck runs out. So that's this. Uh, the lone secret mastermind wants the main deck to run out of the cards before the last challenge card is overcome. So a little bit different way of playing the game, which is kind of cool. Uh, two important rules modification. At the end of your turn, if you did not buy or gain a card from the lineup, add the top card of the main deck to the lineup. This can result in a lineup of more than five cards. Then if there are fewer than five cards in the lineup, refill it to five as usual. The players can't stall the game by not buying cards. The time to act is now. So once the Secret Mastermind has been revealed, attack cards played by loyal players do not affect any loyal players, even if they want them to. All right, so set up. So you shuffle the main uh, Watchmen deck cards into the main deck. So that's these. Uh, deal out the Watchmen oversized cards. Superheroes or players may choose which one they want you to play. That's these. So you grab the loyalty cards. Count the number of players. Make a loyalty deck with that many cards. Uh, using one, are you the secret mastermind card? And the rest being, you are loyal. So here's all the loyal ones. And then we have the, you are the secret mastermind card. Secret mastermind card is... You are the secret mastermind. You will want to collect the cards needed for the public villainous machinations card. If the main deck runs out and the lineup cannot be refilled, you win the game. Okay. So then after that, you shuffle the mastermind plot cards, which is this, and deal one to each player face down, look at your card, and then hide it under your superhero. Place the unused cards back in the box face down. So we've got for the mastermind plot cards... Technological Blake Breakthrough, uh, Secret Mastermind Ongoing. Each time you play an equipment during your turn, destroy the top card of the main deck. Loyal players, when you attempt to beat this challenge, each other player may uh, add one random card from their hand to the fight. We have Demonstration of Power. Secret, uh, each time you play a superpower during your turn, destroy the top card of your main deck. Loyal players, when you attempt to beat this challenge, each other loyal a uh, player may add one random card from their hand to the fight. We've got Subversion of Heroes. Secret Master are ongoing. So each time you play a hero during your turn, destroy the top card of the main deck. When you attempt to beat this challenge, each other loyal player may add one random card from their hand to the fight. So that's for the loyal. Then we've got uh, Turn the World Against Itself. Sounds rather familiar. 
Uh, Secret Mastermind is each time you play a villain during your turn, destroy the top card of the main deck. Loyal is when you attempt to beat this challenge, each other loyal player may add one random card from their hand to the fight. And Death by Thousand Cuts. Uh, Mastermind is each time you play a card with cost two or three during your turn, destroy the top card of the main deck. Loyal is when you attempt to beat this challenge, each other loyal player may contribute one random card from the hand to the fight. So there's that. Uh, and then shuffle the villainous machination cards and place one face up into the spot where the supervillain's deck usually goes. Place the unused cards back in the deck. So we've got these, the villainous machinations. Uh, first we've got power up for progress. If the secret mastermind plays the following cards during a single turn, they add their mastermind plot card to the challenge area. Four or greater cost superhero, two to three player only. Three cost supervillain, four or less cost villain, a four or less cost superpower, five um, <clears throat> or greater cost equipment. So you move the heroes like pawns is the next one. If the secret mastermind plays the following cards during a single turn, they add their mastermind plot card to the challenge area. It's so three cost hero, uh, three or less cost hero, four or greater cost villain, five or greater cost superhero, or five cost greater hero. Outright villainies, um, three or co less cost villain, four cost villain, four or greater cost superhero, five or greater cost hero, five or greater cost villain. And then finally, equipped for mayhem, if the secret mastermind plays the following, four or greater cost equipment, three or less cost hero, three or less cost equipment, four or greater cost equipment, four or greater cost villain. All right, so that sounds interesting. Uh, so then you separate the challenges into three piles. That's these. Um, two level ones, two level twos, two level threes. Mix up each different card uh, pile, then place one from each pile into a stack face down. Level three goes to the bottom, two on the middle, one on top. Flip the level one challenge face up, place the unused challenges back in the box face down. Uh, give each player the standard starting deck. You're now ready to play. So, hidden roles and loyalty cards. In a hidden role game, each player receives a secret card that tells them which side they're on. You will either be a loyal player or the lone ma secret mastermind. The lone, the loyal players are the majority, and they want to undermine or want to determine which player is the secret mastermind. Uncovering the secret mastermind is not the ultimate goal and does not end the game, but it helps to know who you can trust. So, in a two-player game, it would be obvious who the secret mastermind is. If you, uh, if you aren't, the other player is. One slight variation will keep the mystery attack. Uh, during setup, grab three loyalty cards for the start of the game, two loyal and one secret mass mark. Shuffle them and deal each player one card that is kept hidden as usual. Place the unused card back in the box face down as possible. Neither of you use the secret mastermind. Uh, when the level three challenge is flipped face up, if the villainous machinations tax has not been completed, both players reveal their loyalty card. This uh, reveals a player as the secret mastermind. The game continues as usual. Uh, Secret Mastermind can still complete the Villainous Machinations and get their Mastermind plot into play. Uh, if both players are loyal, grab eight random super villains with cost 10 plus from the base set you are using. Shuffle them and place them next to the kicks and weaknesses. You have exposed a new dangerous threat in the form of superpower villains bent on the world domination. Uh, first appearance uh, attack of the first super villain happens immediately. You defeat them and the level three challenge before the main deck runs out to win. Set aside the Villainous machination cards as it is no longer relevant. Challenges. These cards are political, personal, and citywide disturbances that must be dealt with. Uh, to win. The challenges are broken up into three levels and are faced in numerical order at one at a time. On the card, you will find an ongoing ability that affects each player, loyal, and secret mastermind alike. The other text on the card is that uh, what it takes to beat. So, we got Keen Act. Uh, super abilities are blank. Your challenge is to beat. Uh, you have to contribute certain things. Uh, riding is the other level one. Uh, that's uh, during your turn you may pay two power if you do not draw one fewer card at the end of your turn. Uh, contribute uh, to beat you have to contribute a whole bunch of stuff. Next we got Nixon is level two. Uh, the ongoing is at the end of your turn if you do not play an attack, add the top card of the main deck to the lineup. Challenge is you got to contribute a whole bunch of stuff. Um, cancer scare each time a card with cost six or greater enters the lineup. Um, attack each player gains a weakness. Uh, you have to. Contribute a whole bunch of cards to defeat. Uh, nuclear Clock. Uh, this is level three. At the start of each player's turn, that player puts a card with cost three from the lineup under 
this card where uh, when there are 12 cards under it, the Secret Mastermind gains them and places them into their hand. Uh, alien Invasion. Each time an attack enters the lineup or a destroyed pile, make that attack against all players. All right. A card reverts to his base card type and after play is meaning. If you do not end up contributing a single card, may only fulfill one card requirement you may know. After all your required cards have been contributed, there's still cost to pay to ultimately defeat the challenge. This power must be generated by a single player in the same way that a supervillain may be would be defeated. You cannot pay this cost until all the contributions have been made. Cards that reference the cost of a supervillain will look at the cost of the challenge card, but they are not supervillains. When challenge is beaten, remove from the game and destroy all cards that were contributed to it. Next challenge is revealed. Blah, 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 blah. Each loyal player wins the game while the Secret Mastermind loses. The Secret Mastermind is free to contribute cards to a challenge just like any other player. Sometimes the ongoing ability of a challenge card can hurt the uh, Secret Mastermind's chances. Villainous Machinations. Which were these we talked about? Uh, other behind the scenes goings on, the villain of the story does to set up their dastardly plots. These cards are each unique and only one is used each game. After this card is randomly placed face up near the action, one player reads the card aloud. The card is public information. Cards listed on this card are the villain elements. The secret mastermind needs to hatch their plots. Uh, you want to collect two to three of each card. You need to increase their odds of drawing them. As soon as the secret mastermind has played of these cards during a single turn, they must flip over their loyalty card. Uh, you then reveal the um, secret mastermind. That player immediately places their mastermind plot card face up next to the current challenge. This creates an additional challenge. Blah, 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 blah. Mastermind plot is a uh, plot is a challenge card that will allow the messy secret mastermind to speed up the depletion of the main deck. Well, that's why we're going through and um, seeing a lot of things with getting through the main deck. Uh, basically, what this is sounding like... Haven't played it. You saw I just opened it. Uh, it's sounding like it's sounding like a lot of uh, the Crisis expansion, except uh, you go against each other instead of working together to defeat the Crisis, which potentially is really really cool. Overall, I'm liking the sound of this. This sounds like a uh, another really interesting flip and twist to the DC deck building game, which I am a fan of. I think that's really really neat. It's a great addition. Um, I I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, I, I just I think it's really really cool. Overall, sounds like Cryptozoic's kind of got another winner and another solid addition to the DC deck building game. We're gonna play it a few times. We're gonna then do a player's video because after describing that, you're probably asleep uh, after watching all that and listening. So uh, it'll be way easier for us to do a video, uh, and then you can just see how it plays out. Thanks for watching. If you got to this point, I really of course appreciate it. Uh, you can catch us every single day at graphicpolicy.com. Of course, we're on Twitter, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all that graphic policy. See, I'm totally out of it after reading all that. Um, thanks for watching again. Uh, until next time, keep it geeky. Blah. Thanks for watching.